Today we're going to go over Burroughs absolutely insane Galatasaray tactics. It's actually won the quadruple with Galatasaray and obviously won over 90% of the games. It's an absolute banger of a tactic. Let's get right into it. And right away with Galatasaray, you can see here, we actually, well, we dominate the Turkish Super League. We only lose two games and draw the other game right there. We win the Champions League as well, which I will say we got very lucky in the teams we were playing against. So we'll show you some of the highlights regarding that. The Turkish Cup and the Turkish Super Cup. Now, I will say we had one player really standing out here. Akadi absolutely took over the Turkish League. 51 goals, also getting a very good rating, partnered with Ziyech and obviously Kareem right here. And assist-wise, we're also going to favour in rank one and also rank two. And you can see some of the results on my screen right now. A 7-1 win was the levels we were putting up with this team. It was absolutely remarkable. And going over to the team stats, we are going to feature in a lot of them. The most points per game, the most goals, the most shots, the fewest shots against, the most clean sheets, and the fewest conceded. And possession-wise, we're also going to be up there with 60% of the ball. A very, very good season, a remarkable season, one which I'm truly proud of. And going into this data hub, it's going to be very attractive. 3.42 goals per game, only 0.47 conceded, and 89% pass completion, over 20 shots every single match, and a tackle win ratio of 76.06 remarkable. Up next is going to be RB Leipzig, a team very close to my heart. For some reason, I absolutely have a massive appeal to this club. We come out and again have a very, very good season in the Bundesliga on this occasion, only losing one game and that is going to be against Bayer Leverkusen, a team very hot in form in real life at the moment, who actually finish in fourth place in the game. The other games have been win 29 and draw the other four. Unfortunately, Galatasaray, we're obviously playing on the same save, knocked ourselves out. So we got a bit of a buy with the Galatasaray team regarding that. Knocked out in the same semi-finals in the Pockel against Borussia Dortmund. We do win the German Super Cup at the start of the season. Meason, Meason, meaning it is going to be a double winning season. Going over to the Bundesliga, we are going to see some of the stuff we have done. Appenda and Dani Olmo feature in the top goal scorers. 23 goals for Appenda and 19 for Dani Olmo. Average rating, Dani Olmo again finishes in rank one and it is going to be round picking up a 7.3 getting him inside of the top three right there. Assist wise, Dani Olmo again with 15 and Javi Simmons picking up a and also Galashi making a bit of an appearance with the most clean sheets ranking in third place. But going over to the obviously important side of the tactic, what are going to be the stats? So 55% of the ball, most points per game, most goals outscoring Bayern Munich, by the way, most shots, the fewest shots against, and also picking up the fewest conceded while it is going to be Bayern matching us with the most clean sheets. Going over to the data hub, of course, a very important part of any tactic video it is going to be 2.59 goals per game. So not as many as Galatasaray, probably to be expected, but it is going to be 0.59 conceded again, meaning we are scoring two more exactly to what we are going to be conceding. A good amount of shots per game, a very good pass completion, and a tackle win ratio at over 77%. We can't really turn our nose up at that. Lastly, and I've got to say probably the best set of results, is going to be Aston Villa. Obviously a team very strong in the Premier League, but not favoured to finish in that top seven. And we have come out and finished third in the league. A very, very good season, to be honest, with only five losses against Manchester United, Man City, Tottenham and United again. Teams we probably should be losing against, to be honest. The only team which we definitely should have lost to would be against Bournemouth. But we win the Conference League and the FA Cup. I'm going to take it, a double winning season with Champions League football. Can you really complain as a Villa fan? I don't think so, in my opinion. Premier League-wise, it is going to be Ollie Watkins outscoring everyone. Don't know what happened to Erling Haaland in this regard, but must have been injured. It is going to be Rashford in second place, and Nkunku joint with him in third place there. Buendia, third place with the highest average rating, and it is going to be Buendia again, and Yuri Tielemans in that top three assist category. Going over to the team stats, we are going to look at some of them. We're going to be featuring in the most goals and the most shots for. So not that many, but it is quite remarkable. We're outscoring teams like United. United and Man City. Very happy in that regard, that is to be said. Going over to the Data Hub, it's going to be 2.55 goals per game, only 0.92 conceded, getting on for 17 shots every single game, an 88% pass completion, and a tackle win ratio coming in of 77.24. This video is about Galatasaray, so let's watch some of the cup finals. This is going to be the Champions League final against Benfica. We got off to a little bit of a lucky start there, to be honest, inside of 33 minutes, and as you can see, Benfica were not going to take it. They get back into the game a great through ball there and an even better finish to tie it up at 1-1 inside of 70 minutes and as you can see extra time was a little bit lively we actually regained the lead here with Tete on the edge of the box into Bowie who's obviously now at Bayern Munich into the bottom right hand corner past Trubin 
And as you can imagine, I was very ecstatic here until we lost the ball. As they bring the ball back into Musa, a fantastic equaliser. And at this point in the game, for anyone wondering, I made a big decision. Some would say a stupid decision, but I switched to the attacking variant to try and actually win this game, and luckily, we did. Torreira wins it back in the midfield, he drives out the back line, the Kambu through into Tete, does he score? Yeah, of course he does. We'll take the Champions League. Sorry to any Fenerbahce fans, as it is going to be Hakan Ziyech who's going to open up the scoring here. Little cut inside, drives past it, and an elegant finish into the top left-hand corner. A beautiful goal, reeling back the Ajax days with that performance. Akadi goes through, and it's a complacent bit of goalkeeping. He almost just gives up the goalkeeping area. Just, here you go, Akadi. Please score against me. Hakan Ziyech down the right-hand side. He's going to go alone. He's going to drive it back into the middle, into Akadi, who puts us 3-0 up in the first half, and he also finishes it off in a second, a very easy game. A 4-0 win against a very strong-looking Fenerbahce team. But of course, I'm over to your favourite part of the video. If you are enjoying so far, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And thank you to over the 2,500 people that have joined the Patreon. It's an absolute madness over there. There's over 10 perks, including access to all three of the tactics today. We do monthly giveaways at the moment. There's a £100 PayPal gift card going on. So I will go and check it out. There's absolutely tons of stuff. The link is going to be in the description and also on the screen. But let's go over some of these players roles then. So a new feature I'm going to introduce into these videos, please let me know in the comments what you think of this, is we are going to look at some of the player stats to see how they perform in this tactic with the relevant team. Obviously today is going to be based around the Galatasaray manager. So the goalkeeper is going to be a sweeper keeper coming in simply on defend. We're going to have Bowie as a complete wing back on the right, on attack, on cross more often and cross aim centre. And Bowie as an individual for the season, we are going to see right now contributed with two goals and also 13 assists. So quite a good performance from him. We didn't have a ball playing defender on the right, who is simply going to be on tackle harder. And on the left, a bit of a different vibe, but a ball playing defender on defend. But this one is going to be on dribble more and also tackle harder. Now, I will say, if you're going to be playing someone on the right who's better at dribbling with the ball, then obviously alter these player roles about and have dribble more on the right hand side. But if not, keep it exactly the same. The left back is going to be a wing back on support, on cross more often, and also cross from the byline. And as we can see here from Angelino, the former Leipzig man, he also contributed quite a lot to the team. Three goals and 16 assists in the season. A very good time for him indeed. The midfield is going to consist of Torreira on a ball winner midfield role, on defend, on pass at shorter and also Mark Titer. And next to him is going to be Ndombele as a roaming playmaker on support, on more direct passes, cross less often, dribble less, tackle harder and also Mark Titer. I would highly advise not to change these player roles because they work very well as a team and the results were they were eight here. On the right-hand side is going to be Tete, the inverted winger on support, on pass at shorter, take fewer risks, cross aim far post, and also close down more. And this guy enjoyed quite the good season. You've got to see here, 10 goals and three assists. Obviously, he was alternating with the likes of Zaha as well. We have got to remember that. So we looked at the right. I'm now going to put in the player who played the most on the left-hand side. That is going to be Zaha. An inside forward on attack, on pass at shorter, shoot more often, roam from position, sit narrower, and close down more. It's a lot of instructions but trust me it works really well in the game and replicates that Burak system. Now Zaha could have done more but he obviously he was rotating with other players on the left hand side. He contributed eight goals and eight assists inside of 28 games. Maybe I would have wanted a little bit more from the individual but overall we are going to take it. In the middle is going to be Hakim Ziyech who did rotate with Mertens in this position. The attacking midfield player on attack on take more risks and also run from position with move into channels and Hakim Ziyech actually enjoyed quite a fair good season. 34 games, 22 goals and 14 assists, averaging a 7.66 rating. But the star man of the team is not going to be Zanilo at all. That is actually going to be, where is he? I believe he's actually gone now on the transfer. It was going to be a Cardi. So we're not going to look at the stats on this individual. It is going to be the complete forward on attack on close down more. But a Cardi absolutely tore this season apart, scoring over 50 goals easily. Now, team instruction wise, again, all based off the Gagan press positive. The Gagan press positive. It is going to be set to fairly wide. We're going to pass the ball into space. We're going to overlap left and overlap right. Really get the most out of them fullbacks. We're going to focus to play down the left and the right as well. When you've got players like Zaha and Tete, who are very tricky wingers to deal with, you need to make sure you are using them to their full potential. We are going to play it from the back as well. This is going to remain on standard on your screen. This is going to say slightly shorter, but because I have clean slated it for the video purpose, it's why it says standard on your screen. It should say slightly shorter. The tempo is going to be set to higher, so a very aggressive way of playing football, mix crosses, and be more expressive. In transition, it's going to be counter press, counter, 
distribute quickly and play to anybody across the back line. And out of possession, we are going to instantly go with the high press line of engagement, the much higher defensive line, which we know works very well inside of this game. So Burak, obviously you're a bit of an FM player. The trigger press is going to be set to much more often, prevent short goalkeeper distribution and also get stuck in. So over to the attack and tactic, perfect to throw in score goals, go in against small teams and absolutely batter them. And as you can see right now, both of the wingbacks are now going to be on attack. So that's the first real big change. Angelino as a wingback on attack on cross more often. The goalkeeper remains the same. Both of the ball playing defenders now are going to be both on dribble more. So it is going to be very attacking and it is going to make sure that back line contributes heavily in the attack and side of the game. A deep line playmaker comes in on support on more direct passes and also Mark Titer. And the Roman playmaker remains exactly the same as what he was in the default variant. On the right-hand side, the inverted winger on attack is going to be on pass at shorter, take fewer risks, cross aim far post, and close down more. And on the left, the inside forward is going to be on attack, on pass at shorter, shoot more often, run from position, sit narrower, and also close down more. We then introduce a shadow striker, which is going to get more goals out of that midfield player, and Hakim Ziyech actually done really well in this role, on run from position, and the complete forward remains exactly the same. Team instructions again off the Gagan press, but this time the attacking, the attacking mentality. We are going to have fairly wide. We're going to pass into space. All of this stays exactly the same because we really don't need to change it. The tempo is going to be the same be more expressive and the one real big change is going to be run at defense because we are trying to really take the game to them. In transition is simply going to be counter press, counter, distribute quickly and play to anybody across that back line. Lastly, our possession is obviously going to be the high pressure line of engagement because we are going to be still attacking. It's going to be the much higher line, of course. We are going to max out the trigger press, prevent short goalkeeper distribution. We're going to step up more on this occasion with that line. So a very aggressive way of playing football, which is why I say switch to this if you are desperate for a goal and all or if you're going in against a really small team and you need goal difference, something like that. And of course, we are going to remain on get stuck in because we're trying to play aggressive football. Now over to the complete opposite, the defensive side of the game. If you're trying to seal a game out or if you're playing as a real small team and you're nervous against going in against a giant team, the goalkeeper remains the same. The complete wing back is now simply going to be on support, no custom instructions, and it is going to be exactly the same for the wing back on the left hand side. Both of the ball playing defenders are going to remain, but no custom instructions either. Nice and simple, a default back four to simply do their job. The ball winning field player comes back into the team on defend, on pass at shorter and mark tighter, and we introduce a very risk-free central midfield player to get the ball and simply play it side to side and keep it keep it very standard pass it shorter take fewer risks dribble less shoot less often and also hold position is going to complete that player role the inverted winger on the right is going to remain but now be dropped down to a supportive instruction on pass it shorter and take fewer risks and the left hand side is going to be the inside forward on support on pass it shorter roam from position and also sit narrower the attacking midfield player comes back into the team on support on take more risks and roam from position along alongside the move into channels and the unchanged player role out of all three variants is going to be that complete forward on attack on close down more because we don't want to be too negative we still want one player up there who is going to be the bagsman so now we are going to go over the team instructions by the way the balance mentality balanced on the gagan press so it is going to be the gagan press across all three of these variants today it's going to be standard with the attack and whip we're going to pass the ball into the space we're not going to overlap left or overlap right on this occasion because i want the actual sort of game style to be more possession orientated which which is also where we're not going to focus down the right and the left hand side we're going to leave this entire area blank apart from playing out from the back directness is going to drop down to shorter the tempo is going to remain high because i don't want to be a team which just sit back and doesn't press or do anything i want the team to be aggressive but when we have got the ball i want the team to hold on to the ball and take a much more possession orientated way of playing football which is why we are going to have dribble less selected transition we're going to go with counter press we're not going to counter attack because again as i cannot stress enough i want the team to have the ball not just counter attack lose the ball keep winning it back losing it have the ball possession run the clock down we're trying to get the win guys come on and we are simply going to play to anyone across the back line we're keeping it pretty basic we're keeping that lemon Lastly, it's not going to be the standard line it's not going to be the much higher line it's going to be the higher line. We're still going to rock with the high press line of engagement. We're still going to max out the trigger press and we are still going to put some pressure on the goalkeeper. But that is going to complete for you boys today. Three variants of the Burak Galatasaray tactics as requested. If you boys have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Again, do check out the Patreon. There's over 2,500 people, tons of parks and a massive giveaway at the moment. But more importantly, guys, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.